Chris Jericho is one of AEW's biggest and most important stars, and he has also been a vital asset for AEW because of his star power and name value. Without Chris Jericho, AEW would not have the amount of success that it has today, as he's been doing some of his very best work of his long illustrious career in AEW. It seems like Chris Jericho ages like fine wine, and that's why he's gonna go down in the history books as one of the GOATs of wrestling. That's why he's the GOAT! <laughs> From Lionheart to Y2J to the Ayatollah of Rock and Roller to the best in the world to the man with the list to the pain maker to the champion and much much more. Chris Jericho has done it all and not to mention having a band in Fuzzy that has sold hundreds and thousands of records all across the world to being a best selling author. The fact that Chris Jericho has stayed relevant at a top level in the wrestling business for over 30 years speaks volumes of how much of a genius he truly is. Chris Jericho does not rely on nostalgia as he never rests on his laurels and this is why so many people call him wrestling's David Bowie. Chris Jericho has reinvented himself many times and he has proved that he is the opposite of a one trick pony as he always keeps himself fresh and ever evolving. This has been shown in AEW with Chris Jericho's versatility with his character. Chris Jericho has the ability to seamlessly play a lovable babyface or a despicable heel. Even though Chris Jericho has lost his step in the ring, he's still extremely good for someone his age. And his spectacular mic work, his ability to get any catchphrase over and willingness to put others over has been a huge help to AEW. Chris Jericho is the son of famous ice hockey player Ted Irvine and Chris Jericho had a love for wrestling from a very young age. This caused him at age 19 to train to be a wrestler at the famous Hart Family Dungeon in Canada. And from there, Chris Jericho wrestled in places around the world like Japan and Mexico. In 1996, he got his big break when he signed to WCW, which was WWE's biggest competition at that time. In WCW, Chris Jericho developed his brilliant character further, and he constantly stole the show whenever he was in the ring. But despite Chris Jericho turning himself into a superstar in WCW, he never got the opportunities to shine as bright as he could, as there was a glass ceiling in WCW for cruiserweights like him. So because of this, he jumped ship to WWE in 1999 in a spectacular fashion. And the rest was history. In WWE, Chris Jericho made his name in wrestling as he even beat The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin in the same night to become the first undisputed WWF champion. Chris Jericho then went on to have five more world championship reigns and he is the record nine time holder for the Intercontinental Championship. Chris Jericho spent the bulk of his career in WWE and and in WWE, he solidified his status as a legend in the wrestling business. Towards the end of his run in WWE, he was involved in a red hot storyline with Kevin Owens. Chris Jericho was told by Vincent Kennedy McMahon that his feud with Kevin Owens was going to main event WrestleMania, and Chris Jericho was going to win the Universal Championship. But instead, Vince McMahon changed the plans, and at the last second, Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens' match was second on the WrestleMania card for the United States Championship, and Chris Jericho lost this match, losing the United States title in the process. Chris Jericho felt very disrespected by this loss, so he decided to take a step away from WWE. In his time away from WWE, he reconnected with his old friend Don Callis, and Don Callis just so happened to be working in New Japan Pro Wrestling as a color commentator and was a very close friend to Kenny Omega. Don Callis then convinced Chris Jericho to branch out and work for New Japan, and just like that, Chris Jericho arrived in New Japan Pro Wrestling. This sent shockwaves throughout the wrestling world. Chris Jericho immediately began feuding with Kenny Omega, and and at Wrestle Kingdom 12, they wrestled a no disqualifications match, with Kenny Omega picking up the win. This match was significant because it was Chris Jericho's first match out of WWE in almost 20 years. It was rated 5 stars by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which was Chris Jericho's first ever 5 star match. New Japan Pro Wrestling reinvigorated Chris Jericho's love for wrestling, as the creative chains that were once placed upon him in WWE were cast off, so he decided to go all in with New Japan Pro Wrestling and even won the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. In New Japan Pro Wrestling, Chris Jericho struck up a friendship with the Young Bucks, and it just so happened that the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes were organizing and promoting the biggest independent wrestling show ever, All In. And against all odds at All In, Chris Jericho made an appearance with a Pentagon Jr. mask and he attacked Kenny Omega. And this was a massive deal because Chris Jericho had made a promise to never compete with Vincent Kennedy McMahon by appearing or wrestling in America for a promotion that is not WWE. But Chris Jericho went back on his promise, and this was genuinely 
really shocking. At this show, his relationship with billionaire Tony Khan started, as Chris Jericho later revealed that Tony Khan allowed him to use his private jet for the night. All In was massively successful and it showed that there was a growing market for disgruntled wrestling fans that were clamoring for a big time alternative to WWE. So this led Tony Khan to approach the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes to create a new wrestling promotion to take on WWE as a competitor. And this led to All Elite Wrestling. And at AEW's first ever media event, Chris Jericho walked out and announced that he was all in with All Elite Wrestling and that he had signed a contract with AEW. This was extremely shocking to fans because Chris Jericho was a WWE legend who was advancing the Western wrestling revolution that was going against WWE. And apparently, Chris Jericho signing to AEW genuinely pissed Vincent Kennedy McMahon off. AEW signing Chris Jericho sent out a message that AEW was there to stay and should be taken seriously as a genuine threat to WWE. At AEW's first ever show, Double or Nothing 2019, Chris Jericho's long running feud with Kenny Omega culminated and the stipulation in this match was that the winner would be in a title match against Hangman Adam Page to crown the inaugural AEW World Champion. Chris Jericho's match with Kenny Omega was really good and Jericho debuted his new finishing move, the Judas Effect, which is a spinning back elbow and he beat Kenny Omega with this move. Chris Jericho was now on course to become the first ever AEW World Champion. And after this match, John Moxley, formerly known as Dean Ambrose in WWE, made his debut in AEW and he gave Chris Jericho a paradigm shift. This was electrifying and monumental because Chris Jericho and John Moxley were two major names in WWE but now they were feuding in AEW. More with John Moxley down the line. But anyway, this all set up Hangman Adam Page versus Chris Jericho for the AEW World Championship at AEW's All Out 2019. Chris Jericho got busted open in this amazing match but he managed to pick up the win and he became the first ever AEW World Champion. After Chris Jericho took the win, he went backstage and no one was clapping for him or seemed happy that he was the inaugural AEW World Champ. So he just proceeded to bury everyone and everything. And then he said this. A little bit of the bubbly. Just like that, Chris Jericho became a meme on the internet. And the memes were absolutely hilarious. I don't need a partner. I don't need, I don't need a friend. I need a little bit of the bubbly. And thus, Le Champion Chris Jericho was born. Chris Jericho's run with the AEW World Championship was off to an interesting start as only one day after Chris Jericho won the world title, he lost the belt when he left it in a limo when he was going to a restaurant for a steak. Chris Jericho then, with bubbly in hand, announced a worldwide search for the AEW World title. And watching this was surreal. The belt was found a few days later, but this whole situation was quite honestly really funny. Anyway, on the debut episode of AEW's Dynamite on TV, TNT. Chris Jericho revealed his new faction called the Inner Circle with the bombastic tag team of Santana and Ortiz, the young up and coming talent Sammy Guevara and the muscle of the group and former WWE World Heavyweight Champion Jake Hager and the Inner Circle beat up their lead to close out that episode of Dynamite. Chris Jericho then entered into a feud with the Red Hot Cody Rhodes and this feud had some really entertaining moments and was constantly the best thing on the show every week. The babyface brilliance that Cody Rhodes was exhibiting during this period really amplified how much of a dastardly heel Chris Jericho was at the time. Chris Jericho even lit up a cigar after slamming a car door on Cody's brother Dustin's arm. Chris Jericho was basically smoking that Dustin Rhodes pack. This all set up their match at Full Gear 2019 and the stipulation going into this match was that if Cody Rhodes lost, he would never be able to challenge for the AEW World Championship again. The storytelling in this match was top notch and Cody Rhodes took the loss in this match when his right hand man, MJF, threw in the towel on his behalf which meant that Cody Rhodes could never again challenge for the AEW World Championship. Chris Jericho won by fluke victory but what matters is that he won. And after this win, his bromance with MJF started as Chris Jericho and Maxwell Jacob Friedman played around with the idea of MJF joining the inner circle. More with MJF down the line. Part of why Chris Jericho's run with the AEW World Championship was so special is because of the amount of young talent that Chris Jericho put over. Chris Jericho defended the AEW World title against the likes of Darby Allin, Scorpio Sky, and even went to a 10 minute time limit draw with Jungle Boy. These were new stars that were generally unknown to a wide scale wrestling audience and through Chris Jericho giving them the rub, their names were elevated overnight. Chris Jericho's iconic title reign was further amplified because he was still appearing in New Japan 
pro wrestling. And Chris Jericho was feuding with the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi. Hiroshi Tanahashi said that if he could beat Chris Jericho in the non-title match at Wrestle Kingdom 14, then he would go through the forbidden door and challenge for the AEW World Championship on American soil on AEW TV. And thus, the forbidden door that we all know, use, and love today was born. Hiroshi Tanahashi and Chris Jericho deserve a thank you for that. I said I demand a thank you! Chris Jericho won this match, so that meant that the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi could not challenge for the AEW World Championship on American soil on AEW TV. But this was significant because this was the very first mention and tease of the Forbidden Door. Since then, we've seen many New Japan stars on AEW today. After Chris Jericho came back from Japan, he held his Rockin' Ranger at sea. And on this special episode of Dynamite on the cruise ship, Chris Jericho came out for his entrance and the crowd began to sing along to his entrance music. And this was where the awesome trend of the crowd singing Judas was born and still continues to this day. Chris Jericho began feuding with John Moxley as he saw that John Moxley was a dangerous man on the come up in AEW and because of that Chris Jericho offered John Moxley a place in the inner circle and to sweeten the deal up he offered John Moxley his 4 GT which is about $500,000 and he offered John Moxley 49% ownership in the inner circle LLC. This was quite a sweet deal to John Moxley so he accepted the offer for about five minutes. John Moxley then told Chris Jericho that he was just joking and smashed a bottle of bubbly on Chris Jericho's head and laid out the rest of the inner circle and stole the keys to his Ford GT. Jake Hagel was then left holding Chris Jericho in his arms like one of those sad death scenes from the movies. <laughs> The following week, Chris Jericho was so enraged by what happened that he stabbed John Moxley in the eye with one of the spikes from his jackets, and this left John Moxley with an eye patch. John Moxley then got his revenge when he stabbed Chris Jericho's inner circle member, Santana, in the eye, which also led to him wearing an eye patch. This led to the first ever eye for an eye match in AEW, of which John Moxley won. Chris Jericho then recruited the hired gun Jeff Cobb to go against John Moxley, but John Moxley defeated Jeff Cobb. Chris Jericho and John Moxley's feud then culminated at AEW's revolution. 2020, and Chris Jericho's entrance in this match was legendary as a choir did an a cappella version of Chris Jericho's massively over entrance song, Judas, which was incredibly cool. Chris Jericho and John Moxley wrestled an amazing match, and unfortunately, Jericho took the loss in this match and lost the AEW World Championship. But Chris Jericho's run with the AEW World Championship will go down in history as one of the greatest and most entertaining title runs in the modern era. The Inner Circle and the Elite had been feuding since the very first episode of AEW Dynamite. So they were supposed to blow off their feud in a blood and guts match, which is a war games style match in a double sided cage. But then the pandemic happened and plans for that were scrapped. However, on the first episode of the pandemic era AEW Dynamite, Matt Hardy debuted in AEW in a segment with the Inner Circle and the Elite. And Matt Hardy sided with the Elite and began feuding with the Inner Circle as well. The feud between the two groups culminated at AEW's Double or Nothing 2020 in a stadium stampede match, which was a cinematic style match that took place on the TIAA bank field. And this match was freaking awesome and was filled with many great moments. Chris Jericho even Judas affected the Jacksonville Jack was mascot. Jackson Deville! The inner circle unfortunately took the loss, but it showed how much AEW is willing to push the boundaries of creativity. After this, Chris Jericho started feuding with Orange Cassidy, and Orange Cassidy represented the unlikely star that wasn't supposed to be as popular as he is, as at that time, he was AEW's biggest seller of merchandise. Chris Jericho believed that Orange Cassidy, who was the king of sloth style, was everything that a wrestler should not be, and he also believed that Orange Cassidy selling a boatload of merchandise was just a fluke. This all set up their first match. Match, and Chris Jericho won this match and the following week Chris Jericho proclaimed that he is the demo god because every segment that he was in beat NXT in the ratings and then Orange Cassidy came out and he requested a rematch. Chris Jericho said no to this and so because of that Orange Cassidy dumped orange juice on Chris Jericho and this was hilarious to watch because this caused Chris Jericho's $7,000 jacket to be completely ruined. Chris Jericho wanted revenge on Orange Cassidy so he challenged Orange Cassidy to a match with a $7,000 obligation and Shockingly, in the rematch, Orange Cassidy picked up the win, and this stunned Chris Jericho. So just like how he created the concept for the Money in the Bank ladder match, he created a new concept for a match to settle his feud with Orange Cassidy, the Mimosa Mayhem match. And in this match, he proposed that there be 80 gallons of Mimosa, which is a mixture of orange juice and champagne, on either side of the ring, and the first person to get thrown in the Mimosa would lose the match. And surprise, surprise. 
Surprise, mother Chris Jericho was the one to get thrown into the mimosa at AEW's All Out 2020, which caused him to lose the match. This feud was very entertaining and it elevated Orange Cassidy's name to a new level. After All Out, MJF started cozying up to Chris Jericho in an effort to get into Chris Jericho's faction, the inner circle. Chris Jericho was resistant but still engaged in playful banter with MJF and they were caught in a cycle of competitiveness, constantly trying to outdo each other in little ways but in a friendly and masculine way. And this was a way for them to to move past their differences. And in a segment, this caused them to break out in song and dance, performing the song, Me and My Shadow. And this was an insane moment, purely for how outside of the box it truly was. Fans watching from home were not accustomed to this type of outlandish, unorthodox form of storytelling, especially on a wrestling show. So needless to say, a lot of people hated this segment, but a lot more people loved and hated Chris Jericho and MJF's impromptu song and dance routine. Chris Jericho was still reluctant to let MJF into the inner circle, so he proposed that if MJF could beat him at AEW's Full Gear 2020, then he would let MJF into the inner circle and this set up their match at AEW Full Gear. And this match was good and MJF picked up the win over Chris Jericho and this caused MJF and his right hand man Warlow to join the inner circle. Chris Jericho and MJF's bromance then continued as the inner circle left for Las Vegas. This Las Vegas trip was really eventful and at one point Chris Jericho and the new inner circle looked like they were smoking marijuana. Oh. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> The Inner Circle clearly had a good time, but this Las Vegas trip highlighted how much the Inner Circle did not like the new additions to the group, and some friction in the Inner Circle began. And after this, MJF and Chris Jericho made themselves into a tag team, and they entered into a feud with the AEW Tag Team Champions at the time, the Young Bucks. And MJF and Chris Jericho made a personal one week with the Young Bucks when they attacked the Young Bucks' father, Papa Buck, and left him a bloody mess. And the Young Bucks were very pissed about this, and their feud culminated at AEW's Revolution 2021 for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. And this was a great match, but MJF and Chris Jericho unfortunately took the loss in this match. But ever since MJF joined the Inner Circle, he had been planting seeds of disorder in the Inner Circle, and this caused Sammy Guevara to lash out and leave the Inner Circle. And he tried to even make the other members of the Inner Circle turn on Chris Jericho. But then Sammy Guevara turned, and in a turn of events, they all instead turned on MJF. And as the Inner Circle were about to beat up MJF, the lights went out and Sean Spears, FTR and Wardlow along with Tully Blanchard were revealed and they proceeded to massacre the members of the inner circle and thus the pinnacle was born. And as Chris Jericho was trying to reach for his bat Floyd, MJF stepped on his fingers and this created such a powerful image. The pinnacle then gave Chris Jericho a power bomb through a table from the stage and left Chris Jericho's lifeless body sprawled out over the broken tables. This just solidified Chris Jericho versus MJF as one of the hottest feuds in wrestling. Chris Chris Jericho was rightfully pissed after this, so the inner circle gave the pinnacle an epic surprise beatdown, and their feud culminated in a blood and guts match. Chris Jericho was finally able to give the fans the blood and guts match that he was unable to do before because of the pandemic, but now this match was on, and this match did not disappoint, as it was every bit as bloody and barbaric as everybody had expected. And MJF picked up the win for the pinnacle when he threw Chris Jericho off the top of the steel cage, but this finish upset a lot of people on the internet because they felt that Chris Jericho's landing was a little bit too soft. People said his landing was too soft, but it legitimately fractured Chris Jericho's elbow, so it was still a pretty dangerous stunt. AEW could have used a better camera angle for this fall though, because the angle that they used did not do Chris Jericho any favors. This feud then continued as MJF challenged Chris Jericho to a stadium stampede match at AEW's Double or Nothing, with the stipulation that if the inner circle lost, then they would have to disband. And Chris Jericho accepted this, and this match started off as cinematic, but then transitioned into a real match. And this was most likely symbolic of the transition from pandemic wrestling to post-pandemic wrestling. The inner circle ended up picking up the win and Double or Nothing closed with the first full crowd in almost 500 days singing along to Judas. This was so wonderful to see because after so long of having wrestling with minimal crowds, it showed that Chris Jericho was just as over with full crowds as he was in late 2019 and early 2020. To be honest, this was the perfect time to end the feud between Chris Jericho and MJF. But no, the feud continued. Chris Jericho was determined to get a singles victory over 
over MJF. So MJF proposed the five labors of Jericho, which meant that Chris Jericho had to beat four people of MJF's choosing if he wanted to wrestle against the fifth labor, MJF. The first labor was Sean Spears, of which Jericho defeated. The second labor was the king of the death match, Nick F Gage. Chris Jericho and Nick Gage's match was so amazing and it showcased Chris Jericho in a hardcore setting which fans had never really seen before. Chris Jericho was cut up by light tubes and the famous Domino's incident happened when Chris Jericho's forehead was getting sliced by a pizza cutter and then it cut to a Domino's pizza ad with a pizza cutter slicing a pizza. This was very funny to fans but AEW got into legitimate trouble with Domino's as Domino's threatened to pull ads off AEW Dynamite. Chris Jericho took the win and honestly this match should have been the labor before MJF for how brutal and gory it was. The third labor was WCW legend Juventud Guerrera, of which Chris Jericho had history with spanning all the way from WCW. Chris Jericho took the win in a great match. The fourth labor was Wardlow and Chris Jericho defeated Wardlow. But then came the fifth labor MJF and MJF picked up the win over Chris Jericho in this match. And once again, AEW should have ended this feud here, but no they didn't. Chris Jericho then cut an emotional promo in which he challenged MJF at AEW's All Out 2021 for a final match and he said that if he were to lose the final match then he would retire from wrestling. And they set up their match at AEW's All Out 2021 and this was a good match in which Chris Jericho picked up the win over MJF in a very very screwy finish. Even though the finish was very screwy and the match quite honestly should not have happened, everyone was glad to see this feud finally being put to rest. After this, Chris Jericho in the inner circle entered into a feud with Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and Dan Lambert of America's Top Team. And Dan Lambert has a gimmick of basically being a Jim Cornette fan, as he constantly buried everything that AEW does. Watching Dan Lambert was some of the most entertaining stuff, as he always made sure to get heat that Bubba Ray Dudley would be proud of. Think that heat. Think that heat. The back and forth between the inner circle and American top team was very entertaining and this set up their 10 man tag team match at AEW's Full Gear 2021 with former UFC champions Junior Dos Santos and Andre Arlovsky and Dan Lambert much to his dismay in the match for American top team. And this was a very entertaining match with lots of weird but memorable moments but the most memorable moment happened towards the end of this match. This match just happened to fall on the anniversary of Eddie Guerrero's passing so because of this Chris Jericho let out an Eddie Guerrero dance and hit a frog splash for the win over Dan Lambert in honor of Eddie Guerrero. This was so beautiful to watch because Chris Jericho and Eddie Guerrero were genuinely good friends from WCW and WWE. Currently, Chris Jericho is in a storyline with Eddie Kingston and it's very exciting to see where this goes, but that's where we are so far in the story of Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is quite honestly a living legend and through his time in AEW, he has solidified himself as one of the all-time greats in this amazing sport of professional wrestling. Chris Jericho will go down as one of the most complete and adaptable wrestlers ever and he's elevated AEW to new heights and quite honestly, he deserves a big thanks for all he's done for AEW and all that he will continue to do for AEW. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. But anyway, goodbye, you jobbers.